All right, welcome back to Mountain Restoration, everybody. My name's Chris. Behind me is my 1964 Triumph TR4 that I'm restoring. Still struggling to get the driver's side floor in. Definitely not the most efficient process you could ever do, but I'm trying. So thanks for watching. Moving on with getting everything fit up and marked and everything placed before I uh, take it all back apart to prep surfaces and everything like that. I got the door here, like I had mentioned, I'm going to gut the door. So take the glass out, the glass is pretty heavy. Seems to be in halfway decent shape. The door itself seems to be in halfway decent shape. I do have some, some pretty good pits at the bottom here, but I don't think it's anything that I can't repair. But I'm just gonna start with here. This is all part of the door mechanism. And I've gotta take everything apart. I'm gonna take a bunch of pictures, document stuff. There's a piece of felt up here to, for noise and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, but all in all, it should be relatively straightforward. A little bit different than the way the Spitfire is set up, but I don't think anything really of significance. So we'll just go to town here and see what we can figure out. All right, so you saw that I screwed the screws back in and put this little circ clip back on. No reason not to use the existing holes to save your stuff so you know exactly where it goes. You don't lose it that way. Also, if you look at the felt pad there, that's obviously all gone and nasty and everything and tearing apart here, but that's all right. Just going to leave it there for now. Continuing on. This is the same as the Spitfire was. This, uh, not quite sure what this hook is here, but kind of just attaches, but that's obviously all nasty. You need new felt there. But that's just a, uh, a like a pad for the bottom of the window as it comes down, then that looks like literal horse hair right there. It looks like squirrel hair or something. This here is the winding mechanism for the window. What I took off earlier, that's to open, and sh open the door and I probably can lock it from there too. So that obviously when the winding mechanism comes about, I gotta worry about the glass. And then you see a bolt here and a bolt here and there's the same thing on the back side here that you really can't see. That's essentially the, the inner channel that the window will slide up and down as it comes in and out. So we're gonna, uh, we got a couple stubborn screws back here. Go and uh, pull the channels out, pull the screws out and just get the glass out and continue to uh, gut the door. Well, hopefully this glass ends up in pretty good shape. It's, uh, these aren't real cheap to find. You can see, I think, that it's a rather complex bottom there. It doesn't look scratched or anything, so that's good. I did learn my lesson the hard way with the Spitfire where I didn't protect this stuff. and just kind of put it on top of each other and all the little pieces of dirt and everything all got caught and scratched the hell out of it. So I'm going to uh, wrap these up here when I'm ready. So now that's the major weight out of the door. I should be able to get the guts out now that the, uh, the regulator and everything got a uh, piece of the mounting bracket over here. The guy. See that that comes out relatively easily. This is, uh, looks like this has been brazed. So this has been brazed here. You can see that that piece is supposed to be onto that piece and there's a little, uh, a little brazing there. I'm not sure if that brazing is factory or not. Probably won't be until I get the other door. Doesn't, uh, wouldn't surprise me if that is, but that'll be easy to repair. And you can see where the plastic has been attached here. So again, putting the screws back in that I took out so I don't lose track of anything. We'll move down the line here. So this here is the inside of the door handle. You can see when I press the door handle there, it pops up and it lifts this, lifts that little arm that I just put my hand in front of, lifts that little guy up and that will pop the door open spring return and all sorts of complicated stuff going on there. So I took a couple pictures and I'll disassemble that. All right, so again, this, uh, this is broken here. It also looks like this thing got bent in some way. So these aren't in great shape. All the felt's destroyed inside. That's all I'm gonna have to get cleaned up. 
Uh, that's going to be a little tricky to repair, especially with this big honking thing. That didn't really lend itself to filming, unfortunately. I had to really get buried in there. But this is essentially the entire window regulator. The, uh, the crank here and the spring to help you lift it. And you can see that the plastic is sealed inside the window channel so that the, this will ride up and down with the window, I assume. Little clips in here, I could take this apart a little bit further, but I'm not going to right now. There's a pretty good, uh, pretty good amount of rust in this regulator here. I'm not sure that it's anything that compromise it. I don't know. It might. But uh, all in all, in halfway decent shape. This is a real pain in the rear. That center screw there, it used just this little, like a real flat nut here, 5 8 that came all the way through and captured. And then this piece down here is a, is a slide. But anyway, I'm not going to get into the door real, real deep right now. It's gutted, which is what I wanted to do. Weighs much, weighs much less. So I'm going to get stuff cleaned up, get stuff marked, get it put away so I don't lose track of what we're wearing, all that kind of good stuff. Still have got the uh, door release mechanism over here isn't, uh, isn't coming out yet, so I'll see if I can keep banging on that. But we'll get back over to the car when the doors uh, settle down and see if we can get it lined up a little bit. All right, surprises are always fun. So this uh, screw stripped out on me trying to get it out, which, which is okay. But it looks like this door latch mechanism is JB welded in. You can kind of see some brazing or something right there, but I think it's JB weld. And then... I think this is filler in here, and you can see some damage there. This was the uh, other side of that screw, the other screw. That's why it was one Phillips and one flathead, and it was a, obviously a, a bad, not going to focus for you, it was obviously a bad tack weld to keep that captive nut in there. So I got, I got something going on in there. There's a reinforcement plate behind this. Probably eventually I have to drill that out, repair it weld it back in. But for now, I'm just going to try to see, get the Dremel out, see if I can explore this a little bit get this screw out of here what some way shape or form and get this get this mechanism out of here and then hang the door got it not quite sure why they would braze it in unless this is all full of filler and everything and just in really bad shape the uh, the thing kind of came apart the little cap came off that, that that's big of a deal obviously that needs to get all cleaned up anyway I'm sure I can put it back together door is gutted now with the exception of the felt pads and the rubber seal that goes across the top where the, the window would wind up and down. So now I'll be ready to hang it and see how it fits. Got the door here, cleaned up the hinge areas where they land, both on the hinge side and on the A-post side, also cleaned up the bolts. So this, uh, the way this works, the hinge just come from the outside and the bolts come in through the uh, B-post or the A-post and there's a reinforcement plate in here. I should be able to hold this door up, we'll see. One of the things I did before I removed the door is I used real small drill bits and drilled holes through the hinge and through the A-post just to kind of mark where everything was. So we'll see. I'm going to put those drill bits back in. Well, I've been playing with it for a while, but it seems to, seems to work. I got the, uh, the little drill bits in there. They're lined up. Gap gets pretty tight up here, um, which shouldn't have had anything to do. Of course, the fender's not... I don't got the fender fully bolted down, so that, that's got some of it here. The bottom sill is still flat. I, st I still think I need to spring it. It can come up a little bit, and I think it's really evident back here on the rear fender. You can see how big that gap is there, and I think when this gets sprung and this gets bolted in, that flattens right up. And when that flattens right up, these gaps come in pretty good. I don't have the door capture mechanism on here because it was all messed up like I showed you. If I get this fender bolted up and actually in place, I think the gaps will line up pretty well. I don't have any of the hardware, it's all buried in one of the boxes, so I'll have to dig that out. I think based on where the door is and based on where my rough fit here is and everything, I'm confident that if it's not in right now, I'll definitely be able to get it there. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt the wings up. You can see there's a uh, one of those little spire nuts there. This is the back on the B post. And on the A post side, you got three of them down here. And those are just the old ones from the original fenders and the wings. And I'm going to attach the wing, front wing up here at this bolt right there. And then I've got another uh, spot that I'm going to do back here. And then the same thing on this side, just kind of picking two spots to try to get it nice and level. Go ahead and see how it fits up.
there's the front wing in, fits pretty well. The door gap is pretty even all the way down. The uh, slight problem here, and it's pretty subtle, it might be hard to show you, it kind of starts to bow out a little bit down at the bottom here, and which tells me that the bottom of the wing is pushing up and causing a little bow in here. So I can either loosen the top here and bring this up, which it fits pretty good right here, so I don't think that's the trick, but I think it might be the fact that this is maybe a little too bowed up in here, and if I can bring the wing, or excuse me, the sill, and kind of flatten it a little bit, that'll allow this to, to rest a little bit better. So I'll, I'll try to play with that, but otherwise that fits pretty good. I'm gonna put the rear on here, same, uh, same thing, got a couple attachment points at the front and the back, and then the one attachment point down at the bottom here, and we'll get and see how that one looks. Pretty much same thing on this side, happy with how it fits. The door is a little bit low, if you can see that crease there. Doesn't quite line up, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or so. And so the gap down here at the bottom gets a little bit wider. But when I try to manhandle the door a little bit and pick it up, I, uh, I'm happy with that gap there. Happy with the gap in the front, they're even and pretty much equal. And then down here, that gap looks pretty good. A little bit of bowing again, but I think some of that's just a slight difference in shape between the, the sill, the aftermarket sill and the original wing. Somebody had mentioned that I have a lot of patience and all that, and, 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 I, and I guess, but uh, like I had mentioned, I had the uh, Spitfire and I had fitment problems and gap problems and everything. Gonna be a little bit easier with wings here that aren't solid to the car. I, I can move those and adjust those. It may, might be a little bit more complicated than an adjustment, but at least I have more points to be able to adjust. So that makes it a little bit better, I think. But now, the, uh, the next trick now is going to be to get all this stuff back apart, get the floor ready to go. The floor is not quite aligned. You can see these holes are, I think you can see that the holes are off a little bit. The hole up front is, is way off. So I've got a, the floor is a little bit crooked, but I still have a lot of prep work, but that's going to be uh, taking everything apart now, getting everything uh, resituated and get ready to start welding stuff in. Got the three circles that I'm going to fill in with there. I'll show you how I'm going to do this. So I think I got that technique either from Fitzy or from Tom at Garage Time. I can't remember which. Maybe it's a combination of the two. Who knows? Maybe it's neither. But that might not be the best way to do it, but it's a way to do it. Next up for the floor is to put the floor to body braces in. If you look here, this one's set this way to the inside a little bit. You can see that the holes don't quite line up and that's that seam where the uh, or that folds over there, so I don't have much of a choice. On the other one, just the opposite, I can come in quite a ways with this guy. So what I'm gonna do, tap a hole, or not tap a hole, but put in a hole and put a sheet metal screw through there and see if I can't get, uh, get these kind of set in there and put the floor in and see what it looks like, kind of as a trial fit. All right, let's see how it goes. I do have the pads in there as well, the old ones. So that'll give me some uh, ability to know a little bit better as well.
All right, well, it looks as low as long as I weld those brackets in. Heck, where they are right now, it should go. I'm uh, <clears throat> still a pretty good gap back here with this wing repair. So lesson learned is I'm going to have to do the other side because it's as bad, if not worse, is that I'm going to uh, have to hold that up to the floor and match the contour of the floor down there. When I go to do this, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to uh, fix that up. Now that I'm confident in the placement of the floor, you can see I've got cutouts here. I'm going to take and repair that piece, take and repair this piece on the A post. And then this guy is right in front of the, or right behind the, the front bulkhead here. I wish I had seen this or noticed it before I put the repair patch in here. I think it might have been a little bit easier, but this, uh, try to get that repaired as well. It's kind of a weird one, but I should be able to get it. It's just that nut, captive nuts in the way. It's going to make it a little tricky, to, for, especially for welding, and then I'll get uh, to get it in there and then get it cleaned up and everything. So I don't know. It seems very localized. Anyway, we'll get these things cut out, get repair patches made up, and get them in. So looking at this piece a little bit closer, it doesn't really seem to be a whole lot of sacrificed metal around it. It's not like a big pit. I mean, it's obviously a hole, but I don't know if something didn't poke that and it just slowly ate itself away or what. So instead of repairing this now, I think what I'll do, what I'll look to do once I get this the body off is I'll drill a hole, make it nice and round, and then go ahead and use like a little disc and try to repair it that way instead of... Um, instead of cutting out a notch or something like that, because this is all real good metal in here and it is going to accept the welds. So I'd rather rather leave it for now and then come back and, and try to figure out maybe a little more subtle way once I can get a little bit better access and get inside with the frame not in my way. Go at it that time. Got a dolly in the vise here. This piece curves up a little bit and I do have a shrinker stretcher, but uh, I don't want to really use that. So as this piece, you can see this is relatively flat. As the piece goes up into the B post, it'll, it'll take a flare a little bit. So what I'm gonna to try to do is hammer it around this slight curve here and see if I can match the curve as it starts to rise up. I'm not sure. Might have to use the shrinker stretcher here just because of the uh, how difficult it's gonna to be to try to get this curve. Or not. Kind of came in. All right, we'll take it over to the car, see if it uh, works. Well, that doesn't look too bad. I've got to trim some metal here. It's both got to get a little bit shorter and a little bit less wide. That's all right. Nothing that a flat disc can't take care of. So I think I'll do that. And I don't really have this. This curve is not, I mean, you can see, I think that this one is sharper than that one. So I think I'm okay, but I gotta uh, check it as it comes down. But we'll go ahead and get the flap disc, trim this up a little bit, try to square it off. And I still got some uh, burrs and everything around the bottom here where I cut it. I'll get those taken care of and we'll come back at it. All right, well, I'm relatively happy with that. Contour is about right, fits up okay. Got a little bit, a little bit high here, which is fine because I can grind that down. A little bit long, which is also fine because I can grind that down. But the corner fits good. Over here, this one's a little bit more. It'll focus a little bit more simple. Again, um, a little bit long, but that's okay. So we're gonna leave that the way it is. And what I'll do is tack it in like two spots, just a little bit, just enough so that I can grind it back out if I have to and get it out, and then, and then. Uh, put the outer sill up to it so that I'm not losing control of how the outer sill fits. What I'm worried about here, if you can see, focus, if you can see there where the angle, the curve is not straight across, it kind of falls to the right a little bit. So this, this gap gets a little bit skinnier. I'm just afraid that the A post is gonna to start to interfere with this as it comes down. So if that's the case, then we'll just make another piece. I got all sorts of metal. As you can see, I've got those pieces fit in, kinda. And they fit okay. I got the sill in there and that's not interfering and the, and the curves look good here and they look pretty tight up against the, the seam. So I'm happy with that. So I'll take this back off. I'm going to tack weld those pieces in and move on to uh, the next part, which I believe I'm going to make this flange over here. So I'm going to have to get that piece in there or at least shape it so that I can get that flange in because I better off putting that flange in now while there's nothing there 
than to try to do it after that inner sill goes in. Happy with the way that came out so far. Still have some cleanup work to do. Now I'm gonna get some welds from underneath there, fill them in, so I'll do some welding on my back. I've built this piece over here, the flange piece, but I'm not uh, incredibly happy with it yet. So this is uh, this is it right here. So we're getting there, but I got uh, a little bit more work to do on that guy. Another new tool here. This is a Harbor Freight flanging tool and a punch tool. I had one of these that was given to me when I first started restoring the Spitfire. It was in pretty bad shape and it ended up eventually leaking and breaking and everything like that. But it's a lot easier on your hands and everything to obviously use a pneumatic tool than it is that other Nico or Nico or however that Chinese um, punch that I have. So you just press the trigger and the thing punches. It's about a 3 16th inch hole and it's also has a flange attachment so you can flange stuff if you want to. But I mainly bought it just for the, for the, uh, the hole punching capability. So as part of the prep to get all this stuff welded in, I gotta go in and punch all these holes and kind of plan ahead to make sure that I, uh, I get them all punched before I get it in there. I just have to take it back out and do it. So I'm gonna just go through on the floor and anywhere else on the body and, and places like that where, where I'm going to need to do plug welds and go through and punch all this stuff out. Got the floor here and I'm going to be putting in, or welding in the, uh, the support brackets. So I'm gonna go ahead and put holes in the floor for the plug welds and weld into the bracket. Lighter metal to heavier metal, which is quite a, uh, it's like 14 gauge or even 12 gauge, so it's quite a bit heavier than the, than the floor is, which is still 18 gauge. So I'm concerned with the heat differences because of the welding and all of that. I mark some holes, drill them out, because I really can't get the flange tool in here. This is the rear bracket here. As you can see, there's quite a bit of distance between the edge of the bracket and the vertical portion of the floor here. I'm looking down at it. So on the passenger side, these are all flush up against down here and everything. Much like those are over here where I, I welded it that way, but it's a lot closer. You can see the holes in line pretty well. So for me to get this flush up against the vertical part, the holes are gonna get off quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is pull this bracket off, put the floor back in as much as I hate getting the floor in and out, and just just in this bracket and pushing it all the way so it's flush up against this guy and see if that's going to impact my ability to bolt the floor down through those holes. I don't think so, but we'll see. So that's about right where it is. You can see that the, the white of the bracket underneath is just, just getting in the way of the hole. So this is with it all the way pushed towards the edge of the floor there. Sorry about the shadow. The... Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna push it back just a tad and then push in the edge to weld it up, but I think we're good. So I'll make a little mark on that center hole so I know where to uh, drill the screw hole to hold it there and then get it welded in. Yeah, but you know you, you learn something after doing something one way for for a long time and it and it kind of changes changes the way you look at stuff so that using the grinding wheel or the cutoff disc to shave those welds down is just tons better than using a flat disc a lot more control i think it's quicker and uh now that i'm kind of starting to get used to it and everything i can even get that pretty much perfectly flush 
Now, obviously, you need to control, you can see everything, which is good, but you need to control where the cutting wheel goes because you slip, and it's going to have a little bit more of an impact, I think. You know, you gouge the, the metal that you don't want to gouge. Flap disc might not necessarily do that, but all these, you can see all this shiny stuff over here. That's all from over overflow, I guess you could say, the flap disc that I'm not running into now, even with smaller flap discs. So, really, uh, really, really a good way to do it, I think. All right, so we got the top of the bracket welded in, so it should be solid now. I'll be able to flip it over, clamp the edges into the bracket over here, mark it, drill it, and hopefully I just didn't mess it up. All right, for the gazillionth time, floor is back in. This time I'm gonna put the inner sill in as well. This is one where I haven't been able to figure out how to get the floor in and then the inner sill in separately. They've gotta go in together and it's not fun, pain in the rear. But we'll see if uh, I didn't just screw myself with putting these brackets in. So all in all, not too bad. I'm happy with the way that everything fits. You can see that those holes line up pretty well. And then about the same here. I can uh, adjust that a little bit more. Up front fits okay, not too bad. I do have the uh, inner sill in, so you can see that. I got some flange issues going on over here, so I'll have to come, come to that when I get there. This uh, can come up a little bit more, so it fits pretty good with that flange. Up here is all right. I still have to build the flange to get the inner sill done, but everything seems, uh, seems to be pretty well lined up. Still have a lot of prep work though. Got to clean up get the uh, the old paint out of some spots get stuff painted with epoxy primer I also want to spray Ospo up into the A posts and the B posts and everywhere that I've got rust and just kind of let that sit so I'm not going to be painting today I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and take those these little seal channels off just because in here I'm going to have to weld and I'm going to have to replace that stuff anyway so now is a, a convenient time I think to get it off but otherwise, happy with the way that it looks. Get all this stuff back out of here and continue moving down the path. All right, everybody, that's all I got. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. Well, like I said, not the most efficient way. Still a lot of work to do, but progress. So thanks again for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers.